السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته everyone everywhere anywhere I hope that you are progressing in your life looking after your family or your friends or your neighbor or your colleagues or your humanity and community this is the second part of my talk which I delivered last week about the world's effective civil society organization part two is talking about the importance of having effective civil society organization and the role of young people in our society. I, I always thank my colleague uh, Ahmed Sheikh from Idlib, Mahar Said from Ghazi Antab, no, no, from Istanbul, and Sahar from Birmingham of helping me. And if you want to join any of my social media, you can you most welcome, inshallah. Last week, we talked about definition and uh, challenges in civil society. This is another definition, which is very powerful definition by Sergei, Sergei Kovalev. What he said, civil society does not belong to a state. A state belongs or relate itself to civil society. You know why? Because the people were created before they started to make community, or society, or nation, or state. Then the people make the society. Then the society make the state. So in his definition, what he said, what he said here, civil society is a society that does not relate to the state, but the state is related to the civil society. Because civil society is there before and after the state. Sometimes the state disappears. Okay? From the earth of from the face of earth. But the people stay behind, the societies are staying behind, the citizens are staying behind. Where can we find the civil society? In a state, in a stable state. There's no war, of course. Civil society will be inside the state, in side the state, doing what? The civil society organization will be taking the challenges and the burden on behalf of the citizens and presenting it to the government and to the state. So it will be like the link between the citizen and the state the citizen and the government, the citizen and the bureaucrat. This is if there is no war. But in a state of conflict, especially the armed conflict, like what you can see now in Yemen, in, in Iraq, in, uh, in other countries, it's not in Iraq, in, uh, in Yemen, in Syria, and the other countries, civil society organizations, which include humanitarian, social welfare, and others, will take the role of the state by providing the service to the displaced and the refugees. To providing the role of the state, providing the service to the refugees and the displaced people and the vulnerable people. This is conflict. As you can see, in the case of a conflict, particularly armed conflict, quite often it becomes the alternative way to the state through providing community service provision and protecting the citizens' rights on local and international levels. Okay? What is the role of civil society organization? Let me read the blue, the blueprint. Civil society organizations are considered to be the third or the fourth partner with the governments, private businesses, research, state institution, and the academia to run the affairs of the state. I added, particularly in the Eastern and Southern Hemisphere. Why were most of it is countries in the Eastern and Southern Hemisphere do not believe in research and think tank? That's why I added research and think tank onto the other three. What is the role of civil society organization? Is to keep strengthening the, and protect the weaving of the social infrastructure of the different societies in the state. Through what? Through the social service provision to different communities. 
strengthen the weaving, protect the heritage, the culture, the values, the faith, and the belief of the citizens. Protect the state natural, national, and natural resources as well. Representing and defending the state in regional and the international arena. Defending the civil liberty of citizens and society. Creating and empowering young leadership. All these done by the civil society organizations. That's why you have to believe in it and you have to empower it and you have to strengthen it and you have to big a bigger space for the civil liberty. Fighting corruption and corrupt citizens and system, especially when the relationship happened between business and the government officers in the state. Observing and monitoring govern, government performance and preventing the unhealthy relationship between the government departments and the private businesses. As I said, clear, more to come. Providing the government with what? Because they are on the ground. Before the government, during the government in the office, and after this government leave the office. Okay? They have the know-how, they have the information, and they have the access to the local community. Providing the government with what? With alternative social, political, economical, theological, ideological solution through its research institution and think tanks. Raising the level of public awareness and citizens' loyalty. Without civil society organization and civil liberty space, you cannot have critical masses in the country. You can't have. And if you don't have a critical mass, actually in the countries, the country will be either fragile or failing state. Responding to natural disasters, humanitarian, which I uh, said it, criterion, as I mentioned before, humanitarian uh, criterion calamities during and after armed conflicts in partnership with local government and municipalities. I want to say criterion and humanitarian, they are the same. But with humanitarian, the leadership is for the, or the, the, the reference is for the human being. In criterion, the reference is for the creator. Participating with government and the other institution in what? In drawing the national strategic roadmap of the state to guarantee the sustainability of its positive progressive development that can protect the state's stability, sustainability, safety, development, and technological advancement. See all this one sentence? I'll say it again. Participating with the government, participating from the very, very, very beginning, from the very beginning, and other institutions in drawing the national strategic roadmap of the state to guarantee the sustainability of its positive progressive development that can protect the state's stability, sustainability, safety, development, and theological and, and technological advancement. Fighting with the government and other institutions, all social problems, such as extremism, radicalism, terrorism, drug addiction, street children, homelessness, destitution, trafficking, uh, traffickers, as well as others. They are a strong arm to the government and to the state. Providing job opportunities for young people and helping in building local community, uh, sorry, lo local economy from community level to the state level. Because you can see if you have got 50 or 70 or 80,000 organizations, the least each one of them will employ 5 to 10 people. 5 to 10 people by 70, because it's about nearly 350,000 people, and by 10 it will be about uh, 700,000 people. And this is actually in a ratio wise in a country which employs about 5, 6 million, 700 or 800,000 out of 6 million, we talk about actually. Uh, 12% or 10 to 12 percent providing okay participating in building the state education I keep stressing on the state in, in the education because education is the cornerstone of sustainability stability and progressive 
development and advancement of the country. The, 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 the ignorant nation will waste its resources and will lose its credibility and will expel all the motivated, young, zealous, loyal national citizens who want to build their countries. That's out of ignorance. So education is very important. And the alternative education, which is uh, community education, is uh, skills education, which is talented education, pioneering education, which is uh, handicraft and all this court and one, and handicraft and uh, 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 vocational training. Encouraging handicrafts, as I said, uh, sorry, I, I mentioned it. Encouraging handicrafts industry. Handicraft industry building economy. Building economy. Look at the, 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 what they call it, the weaving industry in Iran and Central Asia. But the great, the beautiful rugs and uh, mats which come to us from there, maybe silk and other uh, material which is sold, each of them, in tens of thousands of dollars. Encouraging handicrafts industry, skilled workers, profession, uh, building and promoting the community markets is very important from the market to the state economy as a mean of building local economy and track and tackling unemployment. Promoting and sponsoring the young talented pioneers. We've got too many talented pioneers in different parts of the world, but nobody listened to them. The government officers have, not, have no time for them. There's no vision sometimes in the government itself and those civil society organizations, because they are so close to those young people, they can actually discover them and start to protect them and develop them. Supporting and sponsoring small social enterprises, by whom? By the young people. Planning and creating capacity building programs, not only for civil society organization personnel, but also for the government uh, uh, employees. This is some of the role, these are some of the roles of the civil society organization, which we need to promote it, to strengthen it and to widen the space of the civil liberty to allow more civil society organization to be uh, working progressively to build support and partnership with the government to build our economy and defend our countries. The values of the civil society organization, they have values, many values, many values. You know why I'm not putting a lot of references here that I have not read many because I have seen this over my last 40 years in the field and in the offices here. That's why I'm bringing to you what I believe in and I want you to start putting your opinion from your experience. Like the others have their opinions, I don't have to keep reading others' opinion because I have an opinion and you have to have an opinion to, 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 to put on the table and to educate people to follow you because I want each and every one of you to become a leader. Values. Believing in dignity, integrity, and of the individual himself and herself. And the presenting their values, mind, and freedom. Regardless of the race, the color, the faith, the social and economical status. Ensuring the ability of the individual citizen enjoying all their civil rights. This also is applied to community groups, minorities, marginalized, and ethnic groups. Ensuring the right of the individual having good, reasonable life, the right of education, health care, and others. Believing that the individual is the source of the society's development, change, advancement, and existence. These are all the values. They believe in you. It's created by you, it's run by you, it's protected by you, it's developing the state by yourself. So, this is the values of the civil society organization. Ensuring quality and providing the equal opportunities to everyone. Equality and equal opportunities. Ensuring the rise of positive, constructive criticism and progressive criticism to everyone. Yeah, it has to be criti positive criticism and constructive criticism, not actually destructive and demeaning criticism. Trying to prevent all unjust system with the government institution 
with other institutions in the government. Trying to prevent all unjust systems, violence, theological and ideological terrorism. Ideological terrorism is not only materialistic, it's ideological. And theological then becomes armed conflict and different kinds of discrimination. Youth. As I mentioned at the beginning that I'm going to talk about youth, but I will, I found that it's very unjustifiable to mention the youth inside this big talk about actually the role of civil service. That's why I will start to develop another talk especially for the youth and the current and the future leaders. So maybe next week, inshallah, we'll talk about youth. But I'll talk about this slide or the other slide. And I mean, I wrote the talk. I wrote the talk while I was going to London. Uh, this week, I went to London twice to get my visa to Sudan and to South Sudan. And during that travel, I wrote three uh, talks. One of them is about the youth, which I'll be delivering it. The second one is about voluntarism, which would be there. Uh, the third one is about the difference between the strong organization, the fragile organization, and the failing organization. Exactly what I have delivered the talk about the strong state, fragile state, and failing state. So we'll, we'll measure how strong the organization will be and how weak and how fragile the organization will be. This will be happening uh, in the near future, inshallah. And so I'm not going to dwell too much on the youth. I make special talk about uh, the youth themselves. Youth have a critical, a crucial role in creating and supporting the civil society, sector and organization. No doubt. This is, this is not as strange in countries where youth represent more than 50% of the population of the countries, it's particularly in the Arab countries and the Southeast countries. Youth is having a great desire to be involved in serving the public services, the public sector, participating in social services on local and national level. They have the energy, they have the urge, they have the time, they have the power. Use them. Don't abuse them. Through social media now, youth. Through social media, the communication between different parts of the world enable the youth to connect the youth from, I receive messages from Togo, from Mozambique, from Malawi, from South Africa, from Pakistan, from India, from Bangladesh, from Arab countries, and so on, and so on, and so on, from Europe, from America, because we are connected. We are sitting in the same room. Now we are making this live stream. I don't know who is listening to me. I was talking to one of my colleagues who, from another organization called Islamic Help. He was in Balochistan. And we met uh, uh, last week. You know what he said? He said he, f he met four youth in Balochistan. You know, Balochistan is the largest area of the south of, of Pakistan. And they were following me, and they would love to come, me to go and see them. I said, give me the security clearance so I can go and sit down with them and others. So they can see you. Use them. Use them because they are the power, they are the vision, they are the energy, they are the, uh, 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 the belief, and, and uh, they have the time to do that. But we'll talk about it in a special talk, inshallah, be next week. How can we support the civil society organization and the encouraging the citizens to be there? If you want me to join as a volunteer or as a worker, you have to follow these points. First of all, procedures and policies allow, have to, we, have, we have to create, to make procedures and policies to allow youth to be a part of the civil society organization from the age of 18 and less. In my own view, I will start this work in a voluntary, the volunteerism from the age of six, when the young boy and the girl uh, join the primary school, and I will start to teach them how can they start to do social services in the localities, in the neighborhood. Your mother, the family, the role of the family here mentioned twice, family role to, uh, to change the children because the child might like, uh, uh, think as an individual, from individualism to become a citizen. Tell them, okay, you do this not only for yourself, but for your country, for your neighbors 
This is actually how the mother can change her son uh, attitude from individualism to become a citizen of the country. Also, the family encouraging the youth to participate in voluntary activities. Go out, my son. Go out and clean the road, clean the window, collect uh, uh, the rubbish, uh, help the elderly, visit the hospitals, and so on, and so on, and so on. Making voluntarism and social service a part of the school curriculum, not only school curriculum, school and university curriculum, and as well as when you are working in the, in, in the offices to be a part of the promotion. Clarity of the civil society means, يعني, we have to explain to the people, what do you mean by civil society? Because people in the Middle East, especially in the Arab countries, say civil society is about uh, civility, is about uh, liberalism, is about uh, 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 secularism, is about uh, uh, leaving the deen, uh, uh, atheism. No, it's not that. It's about the citizen's right in the society and he, her and his right to be protected and to be developed and actually to have a role in developing the state. Reviewing the policy and the procedure that can protect those who work or volunteer in this organization and also protecting organizations since their foundation. And you have to find uh, policies. If I would like to become a volunteer to be protected, maybe the organization might abuse me or maybe I'm going to abuse the organization. So it goes both ways to find the policy and procedures and the laws can protect me as a volunteer, as a worker and protect also the organization. Reviewing the organization funding to, our, to encourage the organization, to enable the organization to raise more funds. The right of citizens who wish to join the organization to have what? To have what? To have access to the organization policy, procedures, constitution, and, 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 and. So you don't want to, you don't want to bring me there to be a volunteer, or you don't want to bring me there to be a, a, an employee without me having an access to the files, and this is what we call transparency. <laughs> having capacity building, actually we have to have capacity building programs, not only for our organizations, not only for our people, but also for the community, but also for uh, uh, the government officers. Because sometimes with the government might not have enough fund for development, sorry, for capacity build, for organizing capacity building program. Because the government might be very much burdened with a lot of problems. So if the civil society organization have a special category of funding to, 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 to share the training program with government officers. So when each and every one of you will be able to organize such a development, uh, sorry, uh, capacity, build, capacity building development or training program, so you might have a portion f w w uh, to give to uh, the government officers. You can talk to or uh, communicate with the uh, uh, Ministry of Social Welfare, uh, Ministry of Agriculture and others. Either you use your expertise or you train their employees. Keeping organization credibility and integrity help maintaining its stability. Yani when, if I will not join an organization which is not credible, which is not integral, because of what I say, what? Yeah, if, if I'm a girl, if this organization is not credible, they might abuse me. They might, as we call it nowadays in, in the West, I don't know what they call it in the East, I have this uh, harassment on me. Or abusing of me, and this is what we call it a uh, what do you call the name, uh, which was happening with Oxfam. Uh, what is the name of the protecting the girls from being abused? What what do you call it? Safeguarding. safeguarding. So when the young girls come to the organization, we have to have a policy for safeguarding, policy for child protection, even when you work in the field. Okay, you don't come and uh, have a free hand in abusing the young female uh, refugees. We have seen it in different parts of the world. Unfortunately, it happened. It happened, it happened. Uh, it was a sad story mentioned to me when I was in Chad. And one of the drivers of some of the uh, INGO, International Non-Government Organization, working in Chad, 
You know what he said to some of the uh, researchers that he is having he had he, he has seven children from seven different women from the, the not as displaced from the refugees who came from different countries and they are actually in Chad. You can imagine a driver is abusing his authority by having this relationship with the uh, uh, the female refugees. What about what about actually the other people who might have authority? The other thing is in some of the statistical data they found that in one year the number of children born in one camp is more than the number of uh, what do you call it the families because there was relationship between some of the employees from different uh, organization with the female in these camps it's 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 become sickening so we have here to say uh, credibility and integrity is extremely important and this is what happened to Oxfam 2017 or 2010 when they found some some of the uh, uh, employees uh, use prostitution in the office and it becomes a big policy in 2018 of safeguarding. Building good relationship between government and organization and making, com com make, uh, making it, uh, building government relationship between, uh, b building a good relationship between government uh, and the organization and making it complementary. And we complement the government. We are not competing with the government. We are not actually against the government. Maintaining the organization independence. The, your organization, if, if your organization independence, I would be actually joining you. This will encourage me to join you or to work for you. Uh, keeping organization preparedness, always, always pre 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 be prepared, and pre pre preparedness and readiness to respond to the community needs as well as defending its rights. Yeah, the organization has to be ready all the time. Building bridges of trust with other civil society organizations, which is very, very crucial because quite often we find the jealousy between organization X, Y, and Z, and each one of them is trying to cut the throat or stab the, or backstabbing the other organizations. Media support. We need the media to promote the civil society organization and their role. Why? Because media only focus on the strange, focus on the negative, focus on the scandals, and you don't focus on the constructive uh, uh, development and the achievement of the civil society organization. Enhancing the corporate social responsibility of the private sector. Private sector has to give as much as the organization, the, not the organization, as much as the society and the citizen need. Because those private sectors, without citizens, they are out of job and out of business. So they have to pay back in corporate social responsibility to enable this civil society organization to develop and help them actually to uh, be more productive. Engaging civil society organization in the process of a state strategic planning. As I mentioned before, they have to be a part not only a part of implementing, but a part of thinking, a part of uh, uh, participation, a part of planning, a part of uh, designing, a part of uh, implementing as well. And monitoring and evaluating. So this is my second talk about civil society organization, which uh, uh, I hope that actually, if you want to have the written document of this, I can send it to you if you send me an email. Or, or send me a message on the on one of these social uh, this uh, media, particularly the Facebook or others will check it. So and uh, we'll be uh, uh, airing it tonight at six o'clock UK time on the YouTube if you want to actually listen to it on the YouTube. So now I thank you very much for what you have been listening, and I think to conclude by saying the statement which mentioned by Sergari Kivalov, Kovalev, Kovalev, so civil society is the society that does not relate to the state, 
but the state is related to it. Because it was there before the state and it will be there after the state. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.